This particular thing I'm going to talk about shifting into business. Software, of course, is the lifeblood of business now. And this is how I describe software now. Now, you've heard this software is eating the world, but I like to think of software as dissolving the world. It's digested already. It's finished. It's dissolved. Universal solvent. And every thought we have now, every idea is, of course, also coming online, right? It's some mediated through some software more and more. And, of course, the whole concept of CRM, all of that is every customer interaction, every touch point, everything we do. And, of course, every business process, which is a lot of what we are talking about. All of this is now dissolving in software. The whole uh, uh, medium is software. That's where that everything is encoded now. Encoded is the right word because it's really literally being coded into it. So that's why I say now, in fact, I am a software developer who has shapeshifted into a, being a business person now. <laughs> right? I actually think in code. Literally, actually, I think in code now. In fact, I'm working on a lot of code. But I see that the business and software are one. And it's not just true for our business because we are a software company. Every business now, you are real medium in which you are dissolved, you are suspended. <laughs> the medium is software now. And that's, you know, of course, the message behind Zoho One, that the business and software are one. That's why we call it the operating system for business, right? And but this, there's more to that operating system. It also shape shifts to fit your business. In fact, that is our real thing behind Zoho One. It's not only a set of apps, but also a shape shifting capability to fit your business. That is why you're here for the Zoholics developers, that we are showing you how you can shape shift all of what we offer, all of the richness of the suite to suit your business and it's not just creator of course that's a big part but the whole what we now call creator one every business is unique in fact if you don't have something unique about your business you eventually don't have a business because there's no differentiation that's a fundamental i mean something that only when you're in business for a while you realize this that just being i do the same thing as everyone else is not a recipe for success in business. You have to have a, a, a something unique, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a software company, whoever it is, what is your secret sauce? What is your uniqueness? What differentiates you, right? And that necessarily means, and, and every business is now digital, that you have a, a online component, every business. In the now, you know, everywhere from Restaurants where the ordering system, I mean, they have it on your thing. I, you know, these days I don't find many servers in a lot of these places. It's, everything is there and there's an Android device sitting there and you touch and you order and you pay there. And this has happened increasingly for me now. I mean, last four times I went and it's all, I now go and poke behind and see whose Android device is it. <laughs> because I'm, <laughs> right? That shape shifting traditionally, if you look at it in the software realm, it has never been easy, right? That's in fact the bane of our existence in a lot of IT. But getting easier, that's good news. And we are going to show you in this event how much easier it is becoming, what the tools are. And this is the heart of the whole cloud mobile AI revolution. And all of these are now going together. The phone is always in the cloud. You are, we are always living in the cloud now. Our business is in the cloud. And of course, AI is coming in steadily into this. In fact, we stop calling it AI when we take it for granted. Basically, that's what it really is. That the stuff is, there is underneath, it's helping us, it's doing things, but we don't call it AI when it works. We only call it when AI when it doesn't work. <laughs> right? So actually, in that sense, AI is succeeding already. I mean, I'm seeing it. There's a lot of things that, you know, I, I'll give you an example. One of our customers, they have a AI kit and they automated this whole know your customer process for banks. 
banks are now required to know their customer or you know money laundering all of these prevention of all those drug dealing money laundering all those in many many countries you have laws like this now very stringent laws in the us now it's very stringent i mean try opening a bank account it's actually becoming harder because you have to submit so much to prove who we are and and, and all of that and of course the banks want to automate these because it's expensive process I mean, it could cost fifty dollars hundred dollars to open an account right and this company actually is doing these ai tools to automate for example one one simple thing but really important when you take a picture on a phone they require you to submit a picture from your phone but what if somebody puts a static photo and just fool it right they detect whether what's on the phone is a live person or an image they have some secret recipes to detect it and it works with about 99.8 or some level of accuracy this this problem that they solve is worth millions of dollars to a bank there's just one problem just to give you an example and this is actually ai and they can do it they can do they can detect whether that what is shown is a is a fake a picture or a, a, a an actual person on that phone in front of that phone that's just a simple thing, right? So they call it liveness detection. And these algorithms are AI and it works. It works to a really good accuracy. And it's not you cannot easily fool the system. Of course, if you try hard enough, any system can be fooled. But if they cut down the probability, then the bank lowers its cost of doing this process, right? So that's the it's an example of you know it's a mundane example, I mean an everyday example, but it's actually behind the scenes, all of this is now starting to work. That's why I say all of these now mobile cloud ai and all these are getting built into all the software we use including all of our tools we'll talk about in fact my t-shirt says it's zia zia is now coming into our software in a deeper and deeper way that's something that you'll hear a lot about in this event too and that software is now more powerful than ever before you know this and in fact one of the reasons why we are able to conduct so many events and we are conducting maybe 100 plus events a year now around the world and we are able to do this with, because all of this is stitched together with our own software. Backstage is of course our event handling software, these presentations, the Zoolix apps you see, all of these are now we are able to build with all the technologies underneath and we are able to define this better and better with all the hook them together. So there is more and more power coming in this and more accessible. All of that power, we are putting it into these development tools that we are you know, showcasing in this event and you will learn a lot about them. And more flexible, you can build more of these use cases in so that it adapts, shape shifts. And of course, this is our signature, more affordable because our mission is to make it affordable to every business. From the very smallest to the largest business, affordable that's critical because we think that software again if it's a universal solvent it has to be there everywhere you know it cannot be too expensive that that some business cannot afford it so that's that's our mission to make that software affordable distill all this technology and make it really affordable and underlying all this is the tools and what i mean by tools is the craftsman sense the tools we use to build the tools we give you, right? The underlying tools. And that is for us that the word creator is, is a crucial word. That's why I actually came up with this, that we want to build the tools that power the creators. And of course, we also sell, of course, all the apps for the end users, but we also see them as creators. In the end. So that is why that creator... And, of our hand, and we will see a lot of the creator suite now it's evolving into a big platform by itself and that's we are calling it creator one now it's our uh, tagline and you will see a lot more of the creator product you know is evolving into creator one as a full suite and and i will show you some of this this is our vision of the shape shifting software and this is the thing that powers it. The vision is the best craftsmen make their own tools. The best software companies in the world are also language builders and tool builders, not just application builders, application providers. 
So this is actually critical and we have seen this in our own company and in fact, I myself spend a lot of time on the, the deep in the plumbing of software development. I think about how a bug arises for example. How do you prevent a bug at its source when the development is happening? That's actually, if there's one area where it could be called that technically I have an expertise that is in that area now. Like how does a bug get squashed at the point of development, not, not during testing, not, of course, certainly not in the customer, right? And that's a difficult problem, it's a mathematical problem and it turns out that's where a lot of insights are. Because today, if we cannot do that, Increasingly, the digital economy, we are putting it at risk because you see the, the break-ins, you see the security problems, you saw the Boeing 7, the 737 MAX was ultimately a software problem. And of course, that can never happen. And that's where you have to, and, and it's not just because engineers are not competent, because the tools have to get better. And the tools have to get better in the sense that you have to squash that bug, catch that earlier and earlier in the development cycle. Somehow you have to prevent the bug from happening as the code is getting written. And that's what, and it's possible, by the way, these are more and more, these technologies are coming where it's actually possible to do that. In effect, there's a kind of AI watching the programmer and telling the programmer that, no, this is, this is pretty doubtful here, dubious code here. Don't do this. <laughs> It's a kind of, you got to do this. Actually, for programmers, you need this. You have to have that tool. We already have the static type systems, all that we call it, that do this somewhat, but you need to deepen these so that as you put down code, it tells you the thing that this, this won't pass master. This is not good enough. Try harder. <laughs> convince me that this is better. Convince me that this code is safe. That kind of thing. That's actually, it's possible. These are the kinds of tools that are coming. And in fact, our company started with tool making, not app making. We built tools first and then we built apps. In fact, Joe Creator itself predates a lot of our other products. In fact, it was launched before CRM was launched. Even though CRM was our best hit ever, but actually Creator started earlier. So we have that tool making DNA here and then we built the apps from the tools. And so this is a critical part of our own evolution and we are very proud of it and we are actually investing heavily in this whole process of making tools. As I mentioned, I myself most of the time I'm not working in the apps directly, I'm working in the tools to make those apps. And we do take our time to get it right. To give you a, an idea, Zoho Creator was launched in 2006, now 13 years, now in C5, all of that. But I actually started working on the ideas behind it in 2002. So it's four years to get the product out. And then now that's in the fifth version of it. And these kinds of tools take that long. I mean, you cannot just do it in one year and it, it won't be any good, actually. You have to have the depth in it. And we were the very first, what at that time was called the online application builder. I mean, we were the very first kind of tool with which you can build a, an app online entirely and publish a web app. The mobile phone, the smartphone had not yet happened. And yet, we shape-shifted smoothly to support the smartphone when it arrived. So the same, in fact, the code that was written before the smartphone arrived, it could become a mobile app and could be delivered. That is our tool-making prowess and we are doing that better and better now. And that comes because we take our time. And that's the only way you can build things that last. So C5 now and there is, you know, there will be C6, C7 and I tell some of the programmers oh, who work with me, the youngest ones, hey, someday I won't be around. You know, nobody is permanent. But you got to, you will be around <laughs> statistically. So you have to continue this. I tell them actually, now some of the programmers I work with, because I know, I mean, there's a, they are one generation truly younger than me now, right? I mean, that's age happens, right? As I say. <laughs> then I say, hey, you know, you realize, I just realized it mathematically. You are going to be around. I may not be around. But you have to carry all these ideas forward. You have to be working on this. And maybe you have to teach your grandchildren to build these tools. <laughs> that's what I tell some of the youngest ones now.
So that's that's the mindset. We are we want to build things that last. And of course, they last by evolving and shape shifting. Because you cannot last by being rigid, being inflexible. Our products, our technologies last by evolving and shape shifting. As I mentioned, we smoothly shape shifted to from the purely a web app development platform to also being able to fully have the full cloud, the web and mobile. And then now we incorporated AI into this. 2006, AI was hardly much of a phenomenon then, but now the creator whole platform now, Zia has come in in a big way and increasing, with an increasing role for Zia in it. And that is the shape shifting that we are doing in this. And so even as we build things that evolve, so there is a, there's a two sides of this coin for me. There's a rapid evolution in the capabilities, the shape shifting of the software, but something doesn't change that is, there is a core value underneath that remains timeless. That's what I captured by, like I have the conversation with the developer, I say, hey, what you are building, you, your grandchildren might be using. That's what I remind them. That some of the technical decisions you make now, and this is actually, you think about it, something like SQL, SQL databases that you use. You know, the technology was born before most of us were born in this room, actually. The original papers were published 60s, okay? And the, the technical work behind the relational database. And the relational database is still the foundation of essentially all of the digital realm now, okay? We, that's the, the workhorse behind it that we don't actually realize how important it is. Everything is ultimately some form of a relational data. And we use that principle heavily in our own software. That, that, that principle is very important, that the relational data model. In fact, now the common thing that you will hear a lot about unified data model, we do mean a relational data model underneath, which means it's queryable, it's processable, you can get a lot of insight out of it. That's critical. And that's, and the, the mathematical foundation here is timeless. The form in which it's delivered could be shifting, but there is a mathematical principle underneath. And in a similar way, there are core values of a company, core values as human beings, those are timeless. I mean, the particular uh, you know, clothing we put on it, the particular manners of speech or the, or the dress or the footwear, all of that changes, but the core values are timeless and they have to, they have to be. And finally, I'll say, as customers and partner developers, we got your back, we have you covered, and I don't mean this in some big philosophical, metaphorical sense, really, really have you covered, and this is, this is what the rest of the two days are going to be. We're going to like cover you with all this. <laughs> we got you covered, as I said, and these are all the things that you will see. This is what we call the Creator One vision. And you will see why all of these tools are needed. Just like I said, the craftsmen have a big tool set. And each of these tools has a, a specific place. And then each of these things on the right powers those. And of course, Zia, I mentioned, that's AI to analytics to click our messaging. This is something that I'll, I'll just briefly allude to the how these things connect. I say Zoho is Zoho One as the operating system for business. I often use say something like click the command line of the business, right? Or a, or an operating system of Zoho itself, the command line. What I mean by that and the search together, because increasingly, I'll give you a, an example. We just had a quarter that ended. We are a private company. I sleep well. I don't have any stress, right? <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> That's why we never took it public because I, I like to sleep well at night. I don't like those uh, you know, end of the quarter, all that thing. And still we, I get the reports, right? We still, actually we are, we run quite well internally. All the processes happen, but just that we don't put the pressure on salespeople to do unnatural things, <laughs> pressure customers, all of that, right? We still get the report on how well the business is doing, what are our numbers, all that. And what is interesting is how this whole business process of 
producing those reports for consumption has evolved in the last couple of years. Now it, the data comes, there's CRM from which all the sales data that lands in accounting because that's what is actually invoiced, what is revenue recognized, all of that, that goes through books. And then that goes to analytics because that's what actually produces all the reports. Now analytics now increasingly is the charts are getting embedded into presentation. That presentation link is posted on click and now that is becoming a, an embeddable widget now anywhere. So it, this whole process we are automating. There's still some one or two manual steps here but we are automating this so that automatically every any time these things could reports could be generated and they come and of course periodically end of the quarter or end of the month there will be an automatic report coming in but on demand you could get this current snapshot of the business all in one click and I could do this from click literally the one click click I don't need to visit any of the actual underlying applications and this is what we want to empower you to do for your business of course your custom business process would look different than what I described but same principle applies another similar business process for us is the job requirement approvals one role I centralize in this company is I approve every requirement for a for a person because I keep a lid on hiring I, I hire slowly I want to hire slowly because that's the only way we can keep our culture intact and our values intact we grow too fast things break randomly right so we keep a, I keep a lid on growth itself and so every manager in the company there is 500 and 21 managers as we have about 8,000 people now and they send me a request it all comes in click now and the Zoho people has an integration with this and I see the requirement this process we are automating though I won't automate the approval itself right I go through it and I approve it and but the messaging all of that happens with click now so even though the data is in Zoho people HR and then it flows once the uh, uh, hiring request is approved it goes through Zoho recruit and our HR recruitment team takes over all of that but still the whole business process what I see is click I don't see all the apps behind the scenes so for me as an end user as an approver it's as simple as we can make it I'm just messaging from my phone that's how I think about it but to enable all this magic is all the developer tools all of these come in to enable that magic in the same way search if there is a customer for example a customer directly contacts me and says I need this I need that or something I, I want this better done better I immediately go to Zoho or Zia search we call it which searches across all of these it gives me a full summary of every interaction with that customer that we have had and in fact now it puts the chat transcripts for example if one of our agents has had a chat with that customer I will know the transcript instantly all that is now there online and this is something again we are automating further and further so it, it's trying to present this even more contextually in fact now I've told them when an email arrives in my inbox do this for me already give that summary already for me I don't want to go search for that customer you know it's a customer you have all the information you know there is a chat transcript you know I have the authorization to view the chat transcript show it to me that's what I've told our team that's an example of what the development tools can enable you to achieve in the context of your business this is what the power of the platform is this is why all of these tools exist because every single one of them has a role Orchestly is how the business process is orchestrated Zoho flow is how you integrate the various applications inside Zoho also outside Zoho and uh, Sigma is our extensions builder and of course you know creator catalyst is our AWS Azure type of system where you have now you can run your code in your language anything in, your, in our environment in our data center they're exposing for the first time here you will hear a lot about all this and then all those come on the other side to give you that full capabilities so with this I'll just stop and thank you very much